God is on the throne. His promises are true. The devil is a liar. And God's got information for you. In the name of Jesus. Well, Stephanie's not here today. We're going to miss her. But praise God, she had to. She was not able to come. But we shall move on with what God is telling us about apostasy. Um, we talked about it last week. But before we get into that, we're going to pray. Father God, we come before your throne of mercy and grace. We come before you humbly in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I know I am the messenger. You are the word, praise God. I am the vessel. You are the messenger. Let me get that straight, praise God. You are giving the message to your people, Father God. Hallelujah. Of what you want them to know about the coming events of the world. You want them to understand what you are saying in this hour. For this hour is very crucial, Father God. So we just thank you and praise you for, you know, um, having this information available. And I just thank you that you would even use me, Father God, to bring the message to the people, praise God, what they need to know about what's going on, what's going to go on, and how they can respond to it by their personal relationship with you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm asking you, Father God, to touch their spirits, touch their minds, praise God, that they receive your message today. They receive your warnings today. They receive your love today, for truly you love them as you love me praise God and if you didn't father God glory to God you would not take this time to bring a message praise God that will help them in the coming days in the mighty name of Jesus so we give you praise father God we honor you and we thank you for bringing this message to us this great information praise God which praise God fuels us and hinders the devil from coming against us with all of his lies in the name of Jesus Christ we give you praise amen and amen praise the Lord all right now praise God all right now last week we were talking about we started to talk about apostasy we're now in the not we were in the literature before but we're now into the scriptures on the coming of the Antichrist. So the scripture we had last week was Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 through 14, which read, um, let's see, Therefore be, beware, brethren, take care, lest there be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart, which refuses to cleave to, refuses to trust in, and refuses to rely on God, leading you to turn away and desert or stand aloft from the living God. But instead warn, admonish, urge, and encourage one another every day as long as it is called today. That none of you may be hardened into settled rebellion by the deceitfulness of sin, by the fraudulence and stratagem, the trickery which the, the, the delusive glamour of his sin may play on you or on him. In other words, God is giving you information, people. He's giving you the 411 on what's coming up, what to look for, how to prepare for, praise God, and what to do. So I, I urge you to listen to these messages over and over again if you have to. Like I said, you can get the message on YouTube, Life in the Blood Ministry International, which you can go over it again. You can go over it again on your Facebook. But you need to go over this and let the Lord minister to you also in your own time. It's very, 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 very important. Because what we're getting ready to come, what's getting ready to come to us, praise God, is nothing we've never seen before. We're already seeing things that are going on that have never happened before, especially in my generation, praise God. The younger generation, they kind of don't know. But we need to be equipped to tell them if they want to listen. And if they don't want to listen, we want to pray for them. 
that they will listen, that their hearts will be open, especially to deceit and deceiving leaders, deceiving mouthpieces, deceiving mouthpieces of the Antichrist. So listen, this is saying here in the word, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, to beware, brethren, to take care lest there be in any one of you wicked, unbelieving hearts. So that means to examine yourself, which will refuse to cling to trust and rely on him and people around you that have been in the faith, falling away or falling into uh, um, can I say uh, false prophets false teachers false preachers false ministries you need to know the difference and you will not know the difference if you do not have a close relationship with God read the word for yourself praise God and listen to the people that God is sending you to hear what thus saith the Lord to confirm what he's already told you to give you new revelation praise God is very very important people so instead it says instead warn admonish urge and encourage one another every day as long as it is called today that none of you may be hardened that your hearts may not be hardened praise God by circumstances by lies praise God into settled rebellion against God by the deceitfulness of sin by the fraudulence the stratagem the trickery which the delusive glamour of his sin may play on you. In the name of Jesus, praise God. Hear the word of the Lord. Going on, this is what we said we did last week and we talked about personal apostasy, you know, in the commentary which says to apostatize means to sever one's saving relationship with Christ or to withdraw from vital union with and true faith in him. That's what apostasy is. To apostasize means to sever one's saving relationship, one who has been born again with Christ, to sever that relationship or to withdraw from vital union with and the true with and true faith in him. To withdraw from vital union with and true faith in him. Thus, individual apostasy is possible only for those who have first experienced salvation or regeneration and renewal through the Holy Ghost. It is not a mere denial of the New Testament doctrine by the unsaved within the visible church. This is what it's saying. Apostasy may involve two separate, two separate through related aspects, a theological apostasy, a rejection of all or some of the original teachings of Christ and the apostles, and the moral apostasy. The former believer ceases to remain in Christ and instead becomes enslaved again to sin and immorality. So the Bible issues warnings about this. There's examples of apostasy. I gave you the uh, scriptures. Praise God, that can be found in Exodus, Kings, Psalms 106. I gave you that last week. If you didn't, um, if you heard it, you know, or you can go to last week's um, study and, and on YouTube, which uh, would be, again, Life in the Blood Ministry International, and get those scriptures. So then we talked about the steps, praise God. So I, I if you're just now tuning in, I advise you to go to Life in the Blood Ministry International on YouTube and you can hear it for yourself, the scriptures that you would need to um, uh, or want to refer to. All right. Now, going on to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, which says, Since all this is true, we ought to pray or we ought, ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we have heard. So, since all of this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that have have heard that we have heard, lest in any way we drift past them and slip away. Lest, praise God, in any way we drift past them and slip away. Easy to do. For if the message given through the angels, the law spoken by them to Moses, was authentic and proved sure, and every violation and disobedience received an appropriate, just, and adequate penalty. How shall we escape? How 
shall we, es we escape appropriate retribution if we neglect and refuse to pay attention to the much greater salvation as is now referred to us, letting it drift past us forever. So how shall we escape appropriate retribution if we neglect and refuse to pay attention to such a great salvation as is now offered to us, letting it drift past us forever? For it was declared at first by the Lord himself, and it was confirmed to us and proved to be real and genuine by those who personally heard it. Besides this evidence, it was also established and plainly endorsed by God, who showed his approval of it by signs and wonders and various miraculous manifestations of his power, and by imparting the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the believers according to his own will. So since all of this is true, people, I know you believe it because it's here, it's written for you to understand and get a greater understanding in your personal time with God. How shall you escape appropriate retribution if we neglect and refuse to pay attention to what God is saying to us? I advise you to pay attention to what God is saying in these lessons because he is equipping you if you allow yourself to be equipped. So when the devil comes to you, you are equipped to slap him down to the ground with your truth in the word of God. Amen. So the consequences of apostasy in this uh, commentary, which comes from the Life in the Spirit Bible, consequences of apostasy. Although it is not a popular theme, the Bible is clear and disobeying, clear that disobeying God has severe consequences. Those who oppose God's will and rule will ultimately be excluded from his life-giving presence. Sadly, opposition to God is not limited to those outside the community of faith. The Bible tells of many people who seem to know God but turned away. God brings just consequences to those who turn away from him. Jesus also spoke of those who fall away and their judgment. And writers of the New Testament follows his lead. Praise God. And the writers of the New Testament follows his lead. So the scriptures for, it says, although it's not a popular thing, the Bible is clear in this, that disobeying God has severe consequences. So Genesis chapter 9, 5 through 6, and Numbers 35, 16 through 21, Leviticus 20, 10, and Zechariah 5, 4. Those who oppose God's will and rule will ultimately be excluded from his life-giving presence. Isaiah 66, verse uh, 14 through 24. And sadly, opposition to God is not limited to those outside the community of faith. Not limited to those outside the community of faith. The Bible tells of many people who seem to know God but turned away which is Numbers 16, Deuteronomy 13, 2 Kings 17, 5 through 23, and Ezekiel 8. God brings just consequences to those who turn away from him. Job 11, 20, Proverbs 1, 24 through 23. And the writers of the New Testament follow his lead, which is Galatians 1, 6 through 9, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9, 2 Peter 2, 1. No, 2 Peter 2, thank you. Several passages in Hebrews warn that those who, fall, who fail to take God's word seriously are in deep spiritual trouble and will face the judgment of God. Genesis 2, 1 through 4 and 4, 12 through 13. Scholars have understood the nature of the apostasy falling away and judgment described in the warning passages of Hebrews in various ways, including one. Some have understood the warnings to be hypocritical or hypothetical. That's the word. Suggesting that the harshness severs simply serves to simply shock the hearers out of spiritual lethargy. So that's a good thing. So some have understood the warnings to be hypothetical, suggesting that the harshness serves simply to shock the hearers out of spiritual lethargy. So if it's harsh, sometimes people say, oh, you're too harsh, you, you know, you're just too mean. No, it's to shock you, praise God, out of your sleep, praise God. That's what this means. With no impending judgment in view. Second, a position, I want to say second, Oh, some have the understood. Okay. Second, 
A second position holds that those with whom the author was concerned were Jewish and had not yet converted to Christianity. Thus, they were, they were under God's judgment because they were not yet part of the new covenant. Three, a third view proclaims that the apostates in view were Christians who, because of their spiritual condition, faced God's judgment as believers, but were in no danger of actually losing their salvation. Fourth, a fourth view, these are views, suggests that the apostates had been full members of the Christian community and had experienced the full reality of the Christian faith, but had now turned their backs on Christ and the church. Fifth, a fifth view is that rather than having been true believers, the apostates showed that they never really knew Christ in the first place. Praise God. So ultimately, warnings of judgment are an expression of God's grace. Yes, it is. Seeking to turn the rebellious person to the ways of God. Taking the consequences of rebellion seriously can help us build resolve in faithfully following Jesus. So in other words, praise God, like he said in the beginning, I'm warning you. I love you. I want you to stop what you're doing. I want you to get with me. Let's talk. Let me show you yourself. Let me show you yourself. Let me show you my way, because my way is better than your way. My way is the only way. My way is the righteous way. My way will help you. My way will deliver you. My way will open your eyes to see the deceits and strategies of the devil. My way will open your eyes to see me in my glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. His way is the only way. It says here, the author makes an argument from Jesus from lesser to greater. If in the lesser situation of the Old Testament era, people who reject God's word as delivered by angels were severely punished. And how much greater the punishment will be for those who now reject the word of salvation that has been delivered by the Son himself and confirmed by the Holy Ghost. The truth we have heard is the message of salvation delivered through Christ. Drift away pictures of a ship getting off course. Here it speaks of getting off track spiritually due to not listening very carefully to the good news of the gospel. Because when you first receive it, you know, you're all happy and everything, and everything is cool, but once you start getting trials and tribulations, praise God, and then when you start, you know, seeing other things that you want, and God says no, or... You don't want to get rid of your old way, praise God. It causes you to drift away, to go back to your old way once you believed. According to Jewish tradition, the message of God delivered, the law given on Mount Sinai, praise God, was delivered through the angels. Violation of the law was punished, praise God. Yes, it was. And punishment was inescapable. So all the people that you know that's doing all this crazy stuff, you know, that's deceiving the people, oh, they got, they got their day coming, praise God. But you are responsible for you. You are responsible for yourself, praise God. So you need to check yourself, praise God. And you need to ask God, where do I go to get the right teaching? He will lead you to where he wants you to be taught. So what makes us think we can escape? We cannot escape once we fall back. Praise God. You can't escape. What does he say? He says, um, you reap what you sow. So if you reap rebellion, if you don't listen, if you get off into your own way, then you reap that. But hopefully you'll learn from that and you will come out of that into the way of Christ. So what makes us think we can escape here? The author presses the full force of the danger of turning away from Christ and his salvation. There's no escape from punishment for those who walk away. And the punishment will be of the greatest severity. Salvation refers to God's acts on behalf of his people. For example, God saved his people through the exodus of, or from Egypt. 
In the New Testament, salvation primarily refers to Christ's work of rescuing people from the penalty of sin and giving them a new life by his sacrificial death, praise God, on the cross. The salvation was first announced by the Lord himself. He then delivered or validated the message through those who heard him speak. And he validates it, praise God, by his anointing. So God confirmed the message literally. God bore witness. God himself confirmed the validity of the message of Christ and his followers by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that's how he validated Nowadays, praise God, you have to know Jesus for yourself to be able to distinguish between the acts of Baal, the devil, and the acts of God. The gifts of Baal and the gifts of God. The signs and wonders of Baal and the signs and wonders of God. You got to know through the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And if you're not listening you will be deceived like i'm seeing quite a few people being deceived by false prophets twisting the word of god it's just hideous to see it's so hideous it's, and it's just like i can't even believe they're listening to this but i believe it because they're mesmerized and where are their hearts i don't know praise god where are the teachings i don't know but i pray for them that god open up their eyes to see the strategies and the seats of the devil so that they see it know it and are able to distinguish praise God in within themselves and what they see because it comes from within how is your heart is your heart really for God or is it divided if it's divided you're in trouble you're in trouble of being deceived praise God big trouble glory to God and I pray glory to God that people praise God believers especially praise God will examine themselves will get the right teaching praise God will read the word for themselves so when the devil steps to them praise God they'll know the truth and the truth sets them free and they'll look at that person like oh I'm gonna pray for that person oh they need prayer and keep it moving because you don't want to argue because they have a stronghold and that stronghold is what they believe. I respect your belief. Praise the Lord. And keep it moving. And thank God that you're not caught up in a lie like that. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we want to go to um, Hebrews 10, 26 through 29. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, God. Hebrews 10, 26 through 29. All right. Hmm. For if we go on deliberately and willingly sinning after once acquiring the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice left to atone for our sins no further our sins our, our sins no further offering to which to look back there is nothing left for us then but a kind of awful and fearful prospect and expectation of divine judgment and the fury of burning wrath and the indignation which will consume those who put themselves in opposition to God so if you keep a sinning, praise God, if you go on deliberately and willingly sinning after once acquiring the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice left to atone for our sins. No further offering to which to look forward to. There is nothing left for us then but a kind of awful and fearful prospect and expectation of divine judgment and fury of burning wrath and indignation which will consume those who put themselves in opposition to God. So we really want to pray for people like I really want to pray for them. I don't want to see them, you know, uh, I don't want to see them get in God's wrath. And so it is important to pray for those people and pray for yourself 
and again examine yourself to make sure that you are on the straight and narrow and if you're not on the straight and narrow and you realize that get on it and don't stay in sin and we know what sin is anything that God has said praise God that you not to do that you do anything that he has said even if he personally tells you like he might tell tell you you know you can't go outside today well don't go outside but he's talking to you he ain't talking about your neighbors he ain't talking about the people that live with you he said you don't go outside i'm just making an example whatever he tell you not to do especially if he tell you don't associate with those people don't go to that church don't listen to that pastor if he's telling you that he's telling you that for your good it might not be nothing wrong with them, but it's something wrong with you that he wants to deliver you from. It could be influence. It could be anything. But whatever he tells you to do, whether it makes sense or not, do it. And the more you obey God, whether it makes sense or not, the more he'll let you know, oh, that wasn't me. But that's okay. But you did it. Because you thought it was me. But I want to show you that that wasn't me. So I'm going to show you the difference between me and you. And me and other people. I'm going to show you. I'm going to let you know. But that comes from a personal relationship with God. He's going to let you know what's going on. With anybody. I don't care who it is. He's going to let you know what's going on. Personally. Because the personal relationship is what's really going on. The personal relationship is what you've got to have. In these last days, you've got to have it. It's more important than eating. you got to eat this word. Ingest this word. Digest this word. And poop out everything that's not like God. On the inside of you. Everything that's not like God on the inside of you. Because the word coming down on the inside of your spirit, praise God, is going to show you what's not good on the inside of you. That word is going to be like a, what do they call it? A, a, a consuming fire. Burning. And you're going to be like, oh, oh, no. I got to get rid of that. And get rid of it. Don't keep it. Whatever it is, don't keep it. Because if you do, then you're on the road to apostasy. You're on the road to turning away from the faith. And I would be very, very afraid of that. This word should be burning in your spirit, praise God. It should burn everything out that is not of God. If you allow it, praise God. If you allow it. 28 through 29, I'll read again. Hebrews 10, 28 through 29. Any person who is violated and thus rejected and set a set at naught the law of Moses' is part is put to death without any pity or mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. That's how it was back then. For if we go on, 26, if we go on deliberately and willingly sinning after once acquiring the knowledge of the truth, and you got to know that truth. The truth will set you free. Jesus is the truth. Hallelujah. So you got to seek him to find him. You got to knock and he'll open the door. You walk into the truth. Praise God. You got to have your loins girded about with the truth. The truth will set you free. You got to accept the truth. Walk in the truth and be the truth. And you can only do that through your personal relationship with God. You can only do that by obeying him. The truth. And if you deliberately and willingly walk away from the truth, then you're in trouble. Because you're a fair game for the enemy. So if we go on deliberately and willingly sinning after once acquiring the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice left to atone for. Our sins, no further, no, no further offering to which is to look forward to. So in other words, what you first said, it don't mean nothing. Because you're continuously sinning. Continuously doing the thing that God said not to do. This is the word. 
Once you hear the truth, you are responsible for the truth. It should set you free. It should bring you into further truth. Because the word is the living truth. The spirit of God on the inside of you is the living truth. And you have to partake of it. You have to embrace it. Whether you like it or not. But what you don't like that opposes God, you should throw it away. Because he has something greater for you. Than you can even imagine. So you don't want this kind of wrath. Therefore, it's nothing left for us then but a kind of awful and fearful prospect and expectation of divine judgment and the fury of burning wrath and the indignation which will consume those who put themselves in opposition to God. So any person who has violated and thus rejected and set at naught, it says the law of Moses, but is put to death without pity or mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. This was what was going on before the blood. You just got killed. But now in the New Testament, praise God, you just die spiritually. You don't want that. I don't want that for you. I really don't. And God doesn't want it either. So this information should really, really help you if you really, really listen to it. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I know y'all hearing this. And I just ask the Lord that it be hot butter. Soothing butter. Melted on your spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now we want to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 through 12, I believe. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 through 12. Now 2 Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians, there I go, I'm in Corinthians, Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. These are all good warnings for you people. Let no one deceive or beguile you in a way in any way, for that day will not come except the apostasy comes first. Let no one deceive or beguile you in any way, for that day will not come except the apostasy comes first, unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians has come. And we're seeing some of it now. Because when I saw this, this pastor or prophet, praise God, I just lift him up in the name of Jesus. Speaking to hundreds of people, twisted the twisted word, and they amen in it. I was praying for him. Glory to God. I was thanking God. Because any of us could be deceived if we did not have a personal, close personal relationship with God. So let no one deceive or beguile you in any way, for that day will not come except the apostasy comes first. And unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians has come. And the man of lawlessness, sin, is revealed, who is the son of doom or of perdition. Who opposes and exalts himself. This is what you look for in a false prophet, people. Who oppose and exalt himself so proudly and insolently against and over all that is called God or that is worshipped even to his actually taking his seat in the temple of God proclaiming that he himself is God. That's the Antichrist spirit. Do you not re recollect that when I was still with you, Paul is saying I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining him from being revealed at this time. It is so that he may be manifested or revealed in his own appointed time. For the mystery of lawlessness, that hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority is already at work in the world. But it is restrained only until he who restrains is taken out of, taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed and the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and bring him to an end by his appearing at his coming. 
these are successions of time or sections of time praise God the coming of the lawless one the Antichrist is through the activity and working of Satan and will be attended by great power and with all sorts of pretended miracles and signs and delusive marvels all of them lying wonders watch out people watch out you got to know the difference which God talked about early on in this lesson the coming of the lawless one the Antichrist is through the activity and the working of Satan and will be attended by great power and with all sorts of pretended miracles and signs and delusive marvels all of them lying wonders and by unlimited seduction to evil and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing those who are perishing those who are going to perdition because they did not welcome the truth but refused to love it and that they might be saved because they did not welcome the truth but refused to love it that they might be saved Glory to Ketabasa. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, God sent. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to hear this, people. Therefore, God sends upon them a misleading fluence, a working of error, and a strong delusion to make them believe what is false. This scripture right here, you want, <laughs> you want to not be in that number. Because people who believe what is false, God done flipped them over to their flesh. He done gave them over to their flesh so they believe a lie. And they don't even know it. They think it's the truth. You don't ever want to be like that. I, I hope you're hearing this. Because every time I teach this, or the Lord uses me to teach this, I just it just, it just gets to me. Because we think we know it all. We think we got it all. But unless you know Jesus, even a little bit, praise God, unless you are obedient to God, you can be in this scripture. God sends upon them a misleading, God is sovereign. He is sovereign people. Therefore, God sends upon them a misleading influence, a working of error, and a strong Delusion to make them believe what is false. That's why we need to pray. Glory to God. We need to pray for ourselves and for others. Praise God. That they do not fall into this scripture. Praise God. Help them not to turn away from the faith. Glory to God. You don't want God to give you over to your flesh. Where you can't come back. So in order, praise God. So again, therefore, God sends upon them a misleading influence, a working of error, and a strong delusion to make them believe what is false. In order that all may be judged and condemned who did not believe in, who refused to adhere to, trust in, and rely on the truth, but instead took pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh, glory to God. This Bible contains so much knowledge, wisdom, revelation. Praise God. The Bible, it has so much and even more. Every time you read the Bible, you should get a new revelation. You should never read the Bible and say, oh, I know that. God, show me a new revelation on this one scripture. Show me the depth of this scripture. Show me what I need to see in this scripture. Show me out of your eyes. Show me out of your person. Show me out of your spirit what you want me to see and know in this scripture. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you people, you got to have a close personal relationship with God. He will lead you through the jungle to shore. He will lead you straight to heaven. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So, thank you, Lord, for this commentary. Life in the Spirit Bible is one of the greatest Bibles I've, I've ever encountered, praise God, for commentary. 
I always read out of the Amplified Bible. Thank you, Jesus. So this commentary on 2, 3, it says, Let no one deceive or beguile you. It said that day will not come until Paul explains the events that will signal the, the beginning of the day of the Lord and discuss the destruction of the man of lawlessness and the unrighteous at the end of the age. The sequence of events is as follows. One, throughout the entire church age, a secret power of lawlessness is at work right now. Reminding us that the end is coming, folks. Evil will become progressively unstrained as history draws to a close. Do you see it? Two, as that power becomes stronger, apostasy in the church will reach major proportions, folks. Major proportions. And I'm seeing a little bit of it now. When I saw that false prophet, praise God, speaking and twisting the word and it was hundreds of people there saying amen. I, I, I couldn't believe it. But I saw it with my own two eyes, folks. Third, the restrainer, the one who now holds it back, praise God, of the secret power, is then taken out of the way. Next, the man of lawlessness is revealed. Right now, he's pushed back, way back right now. Because God is trying to get us this knowledge so that, praise God, we can get other people into the knowledge of the truth so that these other people can be raptured up before he lets the devil have his total reign over this earth for a short time. So far, the apostasy reaches its climax in total rebellion against God and his word. So God sends a deluding influence on those, praise God. Who did not love the truth. Six. Sometime afterwards the man of lawlessness is destroyed. Praise God. Along with all who delight in wickedness. This occurs at Christ's coming. Christ's coming after the tribulation. This is after the tribulation. Right now we're going into the rapture. God is preparing people for the rapture. And I, 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 I probably have to. I know I'm going to have to teach on that. You know, I don't know if he wants to do it on video, but uh, the, I'll see what he says. I don't know. But um, <laughs> we are being prepared for the rapture. Because, praise God, you do not want to be here when the enemy has his full reign, people. You do not want to be here, praise God. Because you will not be able to praise God or say, hallelujah, Lord, at all. So rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness revealed. So it just talks about for discussion of rebellion, the man of lawlessness, see the age of the Antichrist, which we're going to read. What's holding him back? Something or something is holding back the man of lawlessness. When the one who holds him back is taken out of the way, then the day of the Lord will begin. The age of the Antichrist. Okay, the age of the Antichrist. What is that? The age of the Antichrist. According to the Bible, the Antichrist, praise God, 1 John 2.18, is coming. The one who engineers Satan's final onslaught against Christ and the saints just before Christ establishes his kingdom on earth. Paul's terms for the Antichrist are the man of lawlessness and the man doomed to destruction. Other terms used in the Bible are the beast coming out of the sea, a scarlet beast, and the beast. Signs of the Antichrist coming. Unlike the rapture, praise God, unlike the rapture, the coming of the Antichrist will be without warning. Several signs point to his coming and his appearance. At least three events must occur before he appears on earth. The secret power of lawlessness, one, already at work in the world, must intensify, which it's doing. The rebellion must come. Those who now hold it back must be removed. So the secret power of lawlessness, that behind the scenes activity of evil powers evident throughout the world will increase until it reaches its climax in the complete ridicule of and disregard for any standards and commands held sacred in the Bible. We're coming into that. Because of a, a prevailing spirit of lawlessness, the love of many will grow, grow cold. Seeing that. 
yet a faithful remnant will remain loyal to the apostolic faith as revealed in the New Testament, which is Matthew 24, 13, 25, 10, and Luke 18, 7. Through these faithful people, the church will remain a warrior church, welding the sword of the Spirit, praise God, hallelujah, to the rebellion, literally meaning departure, falling away, or abandonment will occur. In the last days, many within the professing church will depart from biblical truth. Both Jesus and Paul paint a dismal picture of the condition of much of the visible church, morally, spiritually, and doctrinally, at the present age, as the present age closes. And I'm thinking, God, I'm seeing it. I didn't think I would see this. God gave me this in the 90s, praise God. So Paul, in a particular in particular stresses that the church will be invalid or invaded by godless elements in the last days. The church will be invaded by godless elements in the last days. This rebellion within the church will have two dimensions. Theological apostasy is the departure from and rejection of a part or all of the original teachings of Christ and the apostles. False leaders will offer salvation and cheat grace and ignore Christ's demand for repentance, separation from immorality, and loyalty to God and his standards. I saw this in this false prophet. I saw him do this. False gospels centering on human desires and goals of self-interest will become popular. I'm seeing this. Glory to God. I saw this. Moral apostasy is the severing of one's saving relationship with Christ and returning to sin and immorality. Apostates may proclaim right doctrine and New Testament teaching, yet abandon God's moral standards. Yet abandon God's moral standards. The gospel of the cross with all with its call to suffer, to radically renounce sin, to sacrifice for God's kingdom, and to deny oneself will become rare will become rare glory to God I hope you listening to this people glory to God see both the history of the church and the predicted apostasy of the last days warn all believers not to take for granted a continual progress of God's kingdom through all ages until the end at some point in time, in the history of the church, rebellion against God and his word will reach astounding proportions. The day of the Lord will bring God's wrath on those who reject his truth. The ultimate triumph of God's kingdom and his righteousness in the world, therefore, depends not on the gradual increase of the professing church's success, but on the final intervention of of God when he breaks into the world with righteous judgment and the book praise God in the book of Jude thank you Jesus with righteous judgment three a decisive event must occur before the man of lawlessness can be revealed and the day of the Lord began namely the taking out of the way of someone or something that holds back the secret power of lawlessness and the man of lawlessness glory to God when the restrainer is taken out of the way, the day of the Lord will begin. The one who now holds it back may best be understood as referring to the Holy Spirit, who alone has the power to hold back evil, the man of lawlessness, and Satan. The restrainer is referred to by both the masculine article, the one who now holds it back, and the neuter article, what is holding him back. Likewise, the word for spirit in the Greek can be referred to by a masculine or neuter pronoun. You can see like Genesis 6.3, John 16.8, Romans 8.13, or Galatians 5.17 on the spirit's work of restraining sin. At the beginning of the final seven years of tribulation, the Holy Spirit will be taken out of the way. This does not mean he's taken out of the world, but only that he's restraining influence against lawlessness and the Antichrist's entrance will cease. In other words, he's going to let him have full reign. And those that are underground, praise God, those that are praising God will not be able to do it outside. We just said up on top. 
You won't be able to blatantly say praise the Lord. It will not happen. You'll have to be underground to do that. And God will at that time still the Holy Spirit will still be around and people will still get saved. Praise God. All restraints against sin will be removed and the satanically inspired rebellion will begin. However, the spirit will still remain on earth during the tribulation to convict people of their sins, convert them to Christ, and empower them. Praise God. But it'll be a fight. Nothing like right now. It'll be worse. The Holy Spirit's being taken out of the way enables the man of lawlessness to come on the scene. God will send a deluding influence on all those who refuse to love the truth. They will accept the claim of of the man of lawlessness and the human society will degenerate to a depth of depravity never before seen. So what we're seeing now is nothing compared to what it's going to really be like. I believe that God is just showing us little excerpts, little points, pay attention to, and let us know what time it is. The great tribulation is on its way. I'll say the beginning of it is now. It's not in full screen yet. And this needs to be teached to people so they understand what's going on. And they can get closer to God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit's sin restraining ministry is carried on largely through the church. The Holy Spirit's sin restraining ministry is carried on largely through the church, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, many interpreters believe the Spirit's removal is a strong indication that the rapture of the faithful will, will occur at the same time. So in other words, Satan will be revealed and God will take the people out. The faithful people, he will take them out so they do not have to incur the wrath of God. Those ones that didn't believe the truth, they will be left behind. And some of them will see, oh, wow, I missed it. Oh, Lord have mercy, I missed it. But I'm, I'm not going to fall into Satan's trap. So they will have to go underground. And they will have to incur some serious trouble. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit's sin restraining ministry is carried on largely through the church, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, First. First uh, Corinthians three sixteen and six nineteen. Therefore, many interpreters believe the spirit's removal is a strong indication that the rapture of the faithful will occur at the same time. So Christ returned to gather his churches to himself and to deliver them from the oncoming wrath, which is First Thessalonians one ten, will occur before the beginning of the day of the Lord and the revelation of the man of lawlessness. So that's why people, we need to be preparing, praise God, for God, like the ten virgins, the five that were foolish and the five, praise God, that were not foolish. Preparing for when he opens up the gates, we can walk in, but we will hear him. Most of the people who are foolish will not hear him. But God was showing me that when he calls in the rapture, it will be like a dog whistle. You know, you blow the whistle, but you can't hear it, but the dogs can hear it. Praise God. And I'm not referring to us as dogs, but the dogs can hear the whistle blown. Well, it'd be like that. You will hear God if you're going. If you're not going, you will not hear God. And I never thought that this would be the time that I would see at least a portion of it. But I'm looking at it, and you're looking at it too. If you look around you, you will see that nothing is the same. Everything is changing. And it's all going bad. But the good news is that God is on the throne. His promises are true. And if you do what he tells you to do, you'll be going with him. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So some scholars believe that the restrainer refers to the Holy Spirit and his restraining ministry while, in the, in, while the, the one who holds it back the masculine gender refers to the believers who are gathered together to Christ and taken out of the way. Well, that's the word, praise God. Caught up to meet Christ in the air with the Lord, which is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. 
the Antichrist activities. As the day of the Lord begins, the man of lawlessness is revealed. He will be a world ruler who will make a covenant with Israel seven years before the end of the age. His true identification will com be confirmed three and a half years later as he breaks his covenant with Israel, becomes world ruler, declares himself to be God, desecrates the temple in Jerusalem, praise God, and devastates the land of Palestine. The Antichrist will declare himself to be God and will severely persecute those who remain loyal to Christ. He will demand worship evidently from a great temple that he uses as the center of his pronouncements. Humans have sought this divine status since the beginning of creation. The man of lawlessness will demonstrate through Satan's power great signs and wonders and miracles in order to propagate error. Counterfeit miracles refers to genuine supernatural miracles that deceive people into accepting a lie. It is possible these demonstrations of the supernatural will be seen on television around the world. Millions will be impressed, deceived, and persuaded by this apparent charismatic leader because they have no deep commitment to or love for the truth of God's word. The words of both Paul in 2 Thessalonians 2.9 and Jesus' in Matthew 20, 24, should caution believers against assembling that everything, assuming, excuse me, that everything miraculous comes from God. The words of both Paul and Jesus should caution believers against assuming that everything miraculous comes from God, apparent manifestations of the Spirit, and alleged experiences from God or the spirit must be tested by the person's loyalty to Christ and scripture. The defeat of the Antichrist. At the end of the tribulation, Satan will gather many nations to Armageddon under the direction of the Antichrist and make war against God and his people in a battle that will involve the entire world. When that time comes, Christ will return and supernaturally intervene to destroy the Antichrist and his armies and all who disobey the gospel. Thereupon Christ will bind Satan and establish his kingdom on earth. And when he establishes his kingdom on earth, it will be a thousand years of, which is the millennial reign of peace. That's called the millennial reign. So right now, I'm going to stop there because that should be enough for you to chew on. And then I'll go into, thank you, Father, uh, Rick Renner, read him next week as we go on with second Thessalonians Thess Thessalonians glory to God <laughs> chapter 2 verse 3 through 12 I'd advise you to read it I advise you to definitely um, listen to this maybe three or four times because it's a lot it's a whole lot you know and usually when I study this you know when I study this with somebody or teach this to somebody you know, it, it's done in sections, you know, so, but um, the Lord wanted me to uh, definitely, glory to God, um, minister this to you, praise God, hallelujah, he really, really wants you to get this, so that you can prepare yourself for what's coming, he's trying to get, you know, sometimes people have told me that my ministry is like Noah's, you know, uh, the days of Noah, when, you know, Noah was building the ark and telling people, probably telling people, doesn't say in the word, but I'm sure he was telling people because they was probably asking him, why are you building this? What you doing? You know, and he was telling them that, you know, God is coming, you know, I don't know all of it, but God told me to do it. And then when he, when the flood came, you know, they was all sucked up, dead. And there was only a few people left. It was, was uh, Noah and his family, praise God, that were left. So, you know, God is trying to tell you people. He is trying to tell you to pay attention to the word that he's given you specifically. And there's other people like me that are giving people this end time message so that they can prepare themselves for whatever God is going to do with their life. They can, can prepare their children. Just like I'm so glad that my granddaughter said to me, Granny, I am ready to listen to God because I'm sure she saw some things that were so contrary to what she's been taught or raised that it, it, it blew her mind but I'm so glad 
that the Lord used me to teach my grandchildren. The Lord used me to teach my children. That my children can teach their children. And that we can all teach each other, praise God, about the word of God, about Jesus. I just sent my, my, great, my two great grandchildren Bibles that they can understand so that they can get this word in them as little children. Because little children are more susceptible to the spirit. You'd be amazed what a, a two-year-old will say to you. You'd be amazed to a sign that a baby will show you as you anoint them with the anointing of God. As you speak to them, even in your belly, you speak to them, praise God, about the things of God. About God, about Jesus, praise God, about his birth, about his, his death and his resurrection. As you teach them, they grasp it. Praise God. And that is a stronghold that they will have of God to, praise God, come against the enemy. Praise God. Even in their little bitty cells. Praise God. So I just pray that this lesson, praise God, will show you something, will give you something that God wants you to have in your life. That it will change you how you think and how you act. Praise God, that you will have the humility of Jesus to lay before him, seek his face while he can be found, praise God, and obey what he tells you to do. Because if you're under his pinion, if you're under his wings of protection, you will see, you will be a spectator, praise God of the things that are going on around you. You will be only a spectator because you will be protected by the spirit of the almighty God. So I just thank God for you. Um, I really do. Um, if you again need to listen to this again, you can go to YouTube, uh, Life in the Blood Ministry International to see it again or you play it again on your Facebook. If you desire to give unto Life in the Blood Ministry, uh, you can go to um, Cash App, Apostle Michelle Moody, and you can also send it to Life in the Blood Ministry, uh, which is my home ministry. Praise God. Life in the Blood Ministry International, Apostle Michelle Moody, 863 Manzanita Avenue, Pasadena, California, 91103. Also, if you need teaching, I do personal Bible study at this time. I don't know how long God is going to allow me to even be on this video or to give personal Bible studies. You know, um, you would have to call me, make an appointment, you know, and God puts a curriculum for you, specifically for you, to teach you and grow you up. And so that has to be done by appointment. So you'd have to call me at 626 583-9071 and we do have a service once a month our service this month will be on the 29th of July at 7 o'clock p.m. praise God hallelujah uh, and we just go until God says it's finished it's over you can go home now you know so I just thank God for you I just praise God for you and I just believe God will again um, you know touch your spirit way down deep to the core of your spirit this truth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ God love you God keep you amen and amen see you next week bye bye